Hi everybody. Holy crap. Lannis from Tech Tips. The shit is hitting the fan worldwide now on how bad the Linux operating system really is. And now the truth tellers are coming out. So all you Kool-Aid drinkers, you better cover your ears, cover your eyes, run and hide because you're not going to like it. The first video I'm going to we're going to listen to and talk about it's from a channel called DistroTube and he's a truth teller so here we go Today I want to discuss a little bit of some of the drama going on within the Linux community right now and it's going to combine several different video topics into one video because people have asked me to comment on Solus moving away from GTK to EFL which is the Enlightenment. No idea what he's talking about. And people want to know my thoughts on Pop! OS creating its own cosmic desktop environment and trying to move away That's from the Linux it, one. on GNOME at all. People have also asked me to comment on the Linus Tech Tips videos where Linus over at Linus Tech Tips has not had a good experience using desktop Linux, specifically Pop! OS. And the Linus Tech Tip video right. that really got a lot Let's stop that and talk a bit. There's the problem with the Linux operating system. Bad experiences for all the people who try it out, whether it be P uh, PCs or, or the Pine phone. It, it's, it's nothing but bad experiences. Who's responsible for that? Eh? Who do you think it is? Is it, is it my fault? Is it Lin Linus's fault? No, I don't think so. Let, let, let's listen a little more to this guy more eyeballs you know on Linux content because now people are are seeing this very popular youtuber you know with tens of millions of subscribers and he's trying out Linux for the first time in this case Pop OS and he's having a bad experience he's got all these bugs you know that he's got hardware problems and things like that and then people go and harass in some cases the Pop OS developers to the point where you know they are actually getting tired of, of some of the the negative they're, the developers are getting tired. We're getting tired of your crappy software development as well. And, and, and you're, you're deserving of the ridicule because you build a crappy product. It's been crappy for a long time. Activity being directed toward them. Uh, people, you know, should open issues, file bug reports and things like that, but they've got people, you know, being nasty to them, especially on social media. And Pop! OS is really getting this. They're being nasty on social media because when you call out for help there's no response and then and then everyone makes excuses how it's it's your fault not theirs and you should have read read it more carefully and you should have done this you should have done that and they take no responsibility for anything that's why they're being ridiculed now because we're tired of it you know, double because of not just the Linus Tech Tip stuff, but I mean, right before the Linus Tech Tip video, the negative video about Pop OS, you know, you had Pop OS mentioning that they were having problems working with the GNOME team and then they wanted to basically create their own desktop environment. They want to write their own desktop environment using the Rust programming language. And of course, right now is a very delicate time because Windows 11 was recently released and I really felt that we could make some inroads here. We could have some major market share. The problem is Windows has really started to suck but Linux sucks so much more it still makes Windows look good. games on desktop Linux because so many Windows users are looking to get away from the Windows platform and Linux is definitely a viable alternative but what's going on with some of these Linux desktops right now the state of the Linux desktop right now is a bit of a dumpster fire and that's been the case in big my dumpster opinion, fire for not at a bit. least the last 10 years because when we talk about 10 years the year of the Linux desktop you know, I know what you're talking about the year of the Linux desktop this will be the year that the desktop oh. is going to be so good everybody's going to that that reminds me of the people who support the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, they're winning the Stanley. Cup. It's always it's always next year with these people. It, it's never this year, and that's what I said about the Pine Phone. It will never ever be a good phone because it's 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 a Toronto Maple Leaf problem. Always going to be next year, and next year never comes. 
uh, leave Windows and Mac and come over to Linux. No, the, the year of the Linux desktop, that whole thing, <laughs> that, that died in 2011. 2011 was the year of the Linux desktop. And when I say it was the year of the Linux desktop, 2011 was the year that we officially killed the Linux desktop. And for those wondering why 2011, 2011 was the initial release of GNOME 3. So <laughs> but they killed GNOME 2 and moved to GNOME 3, and to me and to millions of other Excuse me for a minute. Okay, got my snacks and my drink. I'm ready for some more movie. Ooh, desktop Linux users. That was kind of a, a warning sign, right? That was a big red flag that said, hey, we are not going in the right direction because previous to GNOME 3, we had a fantastic desktop environment that attracted millions of users from Windows over to Linux. It was called GNOME 2. We also had a fantastic alternative desktop environment, KDE 3, that actually killed itself in 2008. And, you know, let's talk about that, too, because in uh, 2008, KDE moved from 3.5 to KDE 4. And the release of KDE 4 was a disaster. It was slow. It was bloated. It was buggy. It was very buggy. Windows Vista. It was practically unusable. And KDE 3.5, many people have such fond memories of it. There's a lot of people that have been using KDE for, you know, 15, 20 years that still to this day swear KDE 3.5 was the best desktop environment they've ever used. And what did KDE do? We've reached this point of perfection, essentially. It's getting There's boring. No oh my God, it, it, it's making Windows look better and better every minute. Here, here, here's another re another review of the review of the review. Failing on the entire deal. I, like I said, I, there isn't a best Linux distro for gaming. It really depends on what you want. And there's a lot of noise out there. Like, That's for sure. Do you want to try and squeeze out the absolute maximum FPS that you possibly can? You're going to want to like pick a distro that has like ridiculous kernel optimizations that I don't even know if they do anything, to be honest. If you, you go with a gaming distro, a gaming distro, uh, that doesn't have like access to the desktop or you know makes your life harder if you also do productivity on the same machine, then you know that's not the right choice for you. I really think that there's sounds like a commercial for Windows in the, the in the distro uh, war that's going on. If there was just two or three that we could agree on were like beginner friendly and that's who we bring, you know, how we bring people on board, that would be ideal for me. Anyway, let's continue. I mean, nothing against the author of this article. I did pick up some really useful information, but it is full of jargon that a non-Linux enthusiast couldn't possibly be expected to know. Exactly. <laughs> Tons of desktop environment options, DE, that's what that is. Uh, Gaming-focused kernel modifications, you could be forgiven for not knowing what that is. Uh, well, thank BFQIO you. BFQIO scheduler. And all of this stuff is like 10 years ago. Like, this is stuff that we were dealing with, like, that were actual issues for, you know, new users 10 years ago. I, I, I can see where he's finding this uh, to be... Um, really ob obnoxious and confusing because it doesn't make any sense for like the average user to see exactly what I've been saying this is why Windows sells product and you guys look stupid because you got all this BS bullshit nobody cares about that you know Microsoft has, has a club for that kind of stuff go join the club if you want to talk that kind of crap but for the rest of us we need we need we need a, a filtered end user portal where it's just you know click here and join now that that's all we ask for uh, we, we don't we don't want to drink the kool-aid does everyone have to drink the kool-aid to, to use Linux is that the problem I, I I think you know you know last time I heard the, the where was it in Texas Waco that's that you know what happened to them right they all died the place burned to the ground right because they're all drinking that kool-aid you know do you want to end up that way or do you want to have a decent operating system sometimes I wonder let's continue this kind of stuff and, and, and be like, oh wow, I'm, I'm totally overwhelmed already. He expected to know, not to mention seemingly conflicting information. How is it that Ubuntu can be simultaneously easy to use and beginner friendly and a hassle to set up? Yeah, that's, that's very strange because it says easy to use and stable, very beginner friendly, and then getting set up for gaming can be a hassle. Poor hmm. marketing, that's for sure. That, that, 
I mean, getting set up for gaming can no be No explanation. Asset. Let's imagine how what he's trying to say there. What is this author trying to say? Installing your graphics driver could be a pain. In Ubuntu, installing your graphics driver can be kind of a little bit of a pain. It's it's different from the way that you're used to setting up on Windows. So in other words, in other words, it's not easy. A bit of a hassle. I don't know. That seems just seems so weird to me. That's so strange. Maybe maybe like optimizing the kernel and stuff can be a hassle, but like that's not something that's going to be like a beginner thing. Like that's going to be no kidding. something that advanced users would want to do. Um, so if you're you, but like why would advanced users be coming to this article to learn that Ubuntu is a pain in the ass to set up with a new kernel? Weird. I'm only two minutes into this. I've been recording for 15 minutes. What the heck? Yep, it makes Another for a long video, doesn't it? Customization gets billed as this major selling point for Linux. And fair enough if that's your thing, but speaking on behalf of normies, I don't want a dozen novel ways exactly. to do Exactly. I want one fast, easy one. Then what you want is actually GNOME. Uh, much to the chagrin of neckbearded Linux chads, uh, GNOME tries to minimize the number of customizations and just provide end users with a simple, straightforward way to do things easily and with a GUI. Like uh, uh, most of Yay, GNOME GUI. configuration can be done within the GNOME settings panel. I think that's a good thing for Linux, but I also think it's a good thing for new Linux users. I mean, this guy's going to go on for another 20 minutes. I'm going to pause this and filter it. Yep. Warning: We're Here's a good part. Install all these packages, even though you just want to install one user land application, and it's like. Why? Why do you do this? I, I don't like I do not like app. I think app is crap. What are you, what are you talking about? I've done nothing with this other than install that art info thing. No, that's hilarious. Here's where he like pooches the whole installation. I ran into this exact same thing. I was told, it's super simple. You just install it. No, you do not. This is the solution. And I have to type, yes, do as I say, in order to uh, no. install it. No. And maybe it will install and watch now. What is the point of having a... Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, hello? Oh, no, Did dude. you just hard reset? No, it did not. <laughs> I think you just want to install your XOR, man. I mean, to be fair... an XOR. Broken and and I don't answer it. I don't really care where it is. I shouldn't need to know it. Oh, no, dude. Let's go back and read what the actual message said. So if it ever says, yes, do as I say, if that's what you have to type, <gasps> in, then that means you're about to do something really bad. And he's a Linux, he's a new Linux user, so you cannot fault him for knowing that. Exactly. Uh, or for not knowing that, I should Correct. say. And, and yes, do as I say is, is such a dumb way to phrase that. It should say something like, uh, whose fault is that? I am the aware developer. That this will uninstall critical packages on my system. That should be what it says, right? <laughs> like, what the hell? Uh, the following packages were automatically the warning installed is, and are no longer required. Is weak. There's a heck of a lot installed that are no longer required. All right, let's continue. This is the solution. Oh, oh, I can't read that. The following packages will be installed. The following packages will be upgraded. The following packages, if following essential packages will be removed, this should not be done unless you know exactly what you're doing. And you should be forgiven for skipping over all of that jargon that just pops up when you type in a command, because that's what happens when you type in a command, right? You type in um, sudo apt install, and then it vomits a bunch of crap on your screen. <laughs> you're not expected to read all of that. So you can be forgiven for not knowing what a crappy operating you, system you, you guys have made. It really sucks. Prompts you to say it's got to be the biggest pile of garbage, hot, steaming garbage I've ever seen. Say. You can't fault him for that. I mean, you really can't. I have had something like this happen to me personally when I was a new Ubuntu user. Uh, but back then, there wasn't even this check at that point. Um, and it was when it, it, we were still using apt git at the time. And, Whatever that you know, is. I went to install an application. I think it was from a PPA. And I'm um, pause because this. there boring. were cons. Um, okay, here we go. Update the packages you already have installed in order to install a new one. And that's a good thing. I just also think that with you guys along for the ride, the things that I did were not entirely ridiculous or no, unreasonable. They were quite reasonable. You can be mad at me for breaking it, but just nope. at least acknowledge that it could have happened to 
anyone who's not already absolutely fully you know, well versed in the black arts of Linux three. Linux three, <laughs> I would say that. 20% of the blame falls on the Oh, please. No, none of the blame. As what are you talking user, about? You don't he didn't write the bad that, code. That, you know, when you get a prompt like, yes, do as I say, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but that's such a dumb that, prompt. That's really, like, going to be something dangerous. You uh, yeah, how would you know that? Like You're a new Linux um, user. You wouldn't know and, that. You know, like I said earlier, when, when you type in a command, it vomits a bunch of crap out into the terminal. Exactly. So, he, I don't, I mean, he doesn't know that you should, like, Double check, like look through and make sure that things are are looking good. Yeah, look through and it'll go blah 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 blah, and you'll still be no better informed. When you click yes, or you're flying blind when you're a new user. It shouldn't you shouldn't be offered that kind of choice. Seventy percent of that. It should require administrator credentials. Falls on pop and apt. Really, I think it's apt's fault. Apt is just junk. Manzaro went. Into the live boot you know, so Windows the has nothing to worry about. Luck, They're everybody. going to be king so of the castle for okay. fucking right. ever. Because the, the, it's just well, a joke. Like it, Linux is a joke, it, uh, every, but nobody's yeah. laughing. Twice. It's a pitiful joke. What's the matter with you guys? It Can't you do something right? I'm trying to do that removing thing, but I just closed the package manager. Um, clicked on to... Start. I don't know if it's called start here. Yeah. Um, and Steam was sitting right there. So I launched it. And it Well anyway guys, I am I am fatigued with Linus and Linux and all the Kool-Aid drinkers pointing at fingers at everybody else except the the guy in the mirror. Thanks for listening everybody.